You see the background? I do. I love it. It's um, it's actually fitting for today. I think honestly, mm-hmm. you know, today is 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 you no, know, the final day for to vote or D day to vote. Yeah. And honestly, the news cycle has changed. So you really haven't been hearing about her or Ahmad or Floyd anymore. Not as much. Yeah. So, and when I saw your post on LinkedIn, I was like, I had to get you on. Yeah. Because it made so much sense. Oh, yeah. You know what I'm saying? It was blaring to me actually at that point, so much so that I felt like I had to say something. And honestly, to do it on LinkedIn, I think it's a risky thing to do on LinkedIn. Oh, yeah. It's, it's oh, not like yeah. Facebook. Facebook is whatever, you know what I'm saying? But to do it on LinkedIn, now you have people, possible employers, you know, you name it. Yeah. Like, could look at that. For sure. Um, you know, possible clients, business partners, whatever it is. But, you know, when you feel like you have to make a statement and it's just on you heavy, mm-hmm. you should be free to do that. I feel like part of the workplace or part of what you bring to your workplace should be your whole self. And so that includes your experiences and your perception, you know, as long as it doesn't hurt other people, you yeah. should come as yourself, you know? So I, I think there's a lot of people on LinkedIn that still need to learn that. <laughs> I personally have, I've experienced like people unconnect with me because of some of my posts, but that's fine, you know, at the end of really? the day. So what type oh. of posts have people unconnected with you? Um, so I haven't had anyone in my inbox, like, um, talk to me in direct relation to a post, but after a post, I've seen a decrease in connection. So I make a lot of posts about just disenfranchisement in um, the hiring and recruitment process. Yeah. And, um, you know, what roles are available to black and brown individuals and uh, just their overall experience. And so I could say, Probably with half of my posts dealing with that, I've seen a decrease in connections. Or, or I'll, I'll go into my connections looking for someone for a particular reason and see that they're no longer connected. And I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> so they snuck out the crib. <laughs> <laughs> they opened the window, was out. I'm out. Right. See, when I saw your post, I thought the total opposite, though. Matter of fact, really? Yeah, so like, give like a, a brief synopsis of what was the post about. So the post for me was kind of like a statement of reality um, that we wouldn't normally we wouldn't normally have recognized. So I was just scrolling down my newsfeed on LinkedIn, and I'm connected with all sorts of people. And so it was during a time, I, I believe it was when uh, Brianna Taylor um, passed or somewhere around that general vicinity of time. Uh, there was a lot of people that were people of color that, of course, were experiencing this grief that were talking about it and expressing themselves right. and then kind of expressing how that, that impacted to them in their day-to-day life and their work life and all of that and then I had a bunch of connections that um, were not they were white people they were not people of color and it was a complete disconnect very few of them really had that as a topic of discussion most of them were talking about regular things um you know regular professional topics like you know leadership and uh changing your resume and, and things of that and i it it really stuck out to me as these are two different lives that people live it really you is. know yeah and two different perceptions and we're kind of like dealing with two different realities and it was just clear to me on linkedin just scrolling 
through my newsfeed. And so I just made that post saying, if you struggle with understanding what white supremacy is, which is the ease of some people being able to not even have to think about things like Breonna Taylor and can think about investments, options, and all of these things, then just scroll down your newsfeed. Yeah. And you might understand, you know? So yeah, that was the gist of the post. It reminded me of where we used to work at together. Yeah. And when I was in the field and people of color were thick in the field. Mm -hmm. But we came to the office, it wasn't it wasn't like that. It was a lot of white folks in the office. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) You know what I'm saying? And I was like, and I was questioning that. Okay, so we're good to go out there. Mm-hmm. What about the way the decisions already made? How come we're not having representation in here? Right. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely. And, and that that was a big deal for me. I was like, but but why? You know what I'm saying? Well, what was what was the challenge with that? But then again, it's like with white people, sometimes they're so not sometimes, a lot of times they're just so disconnected. They're just so unaware because they never had a challenge like that in their lifespan before. Right. They never had to bump into it. They never had to face it. They okay. don't have to have uncomfortable conversations with it. They should. But to your point yeah. about, you know, the leadership, you know, you know, being kind of an inspiration and talking that, that stuff, but not really addressing the real issues that yeah. we have to go through. Yeah. You know, so sure. like my, my name is one hick ass of a name. And to put on my <laughs> resume is like, man, like that's that's gonna be a pr- issue. Is someone yeah. really gonna pick me up because they gotta fit, you know, they're from the action quota, <laughs> or are they gonna right. ignore me because of my name? Yeah, that's that's a very good point. Um, and in both instances, it's almost discriminatory, right? Like yeah. even if they are selecting you for their point system, it's still not based off of your character or based off of your skill set and your experience, Um, which is what all people should be experiencing. And unfortunately, you know, so many black and brown people don't have that same storyline, you know, in the workplace or looking for work, whatever the case may be, you know? Absolutely. No, I think what your post that you put was, was well said. Like I said, and in the past few weeks since your post, actually, because it hasn't, the media cycle has completely changed, mm-hmm. and we hear nothing now. You know, really, yeah. tonight, you know, it's 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 you know, we'll find out who we have, maybe not, maybe tomorrow, whatever. But people are boarding up, you know, you know, their their businesses or whatever, their homes, and they think it's gonna be riots again. Mm-hmm. But from who? I don't think it's gonna be from us. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Because honestly, when I watched the, the protests, I saw a lot of white people busting glass and stuff like that. No yeah. doubt, I, saw, I saw a few of us, you know, you know jumping in the full locker, grabbing some stuff as well. <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm saying? But that's what I saw in the news. And I think some people infiltrated BLM. Mm-hmm. Definitely. Um, but at the same time, I don't see where there's any leadership for BLM. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? I, I don't. I don't see that one leader that that really has been speaking that we can get gather around with. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? It's been that kind of like um, some individuals, but no, no celebrities are stepping up because they don't want to lose their money. Yeah, they don't want to fuck up their money, so they're not gonna go ahead and and jump in and and, and risk that. You know what I'm saying? But you yeah. don't see a Malcolm X. You don't see a Martin Luther King that we need at this particular time out there right now that we can get behind. Yeah, because those those fellas, those men, they died broke for the yeah. cause, That's and true. and and I'm okay. He he had his church, so he like he had a little bit of income from the church, mm-hmm. but that was it, and it wasn't much. You know what I'm saying? And they were very, they lived very humbly. You know what I'm saying? But there's no yeah. one I've seen. I'm not sure if maybe you know of someone that. That has been maybe I missed. Like I really haven't seen no one really speaking now or garnering the media attention, or even social media for that point. Nothing yeah. has gone viral, really. No, I I really don't think that there's someone that I could pinpoint as the sole um, person that everybody looks to. Um, but I also think that we're in a peculiar time where 
the way things were set up back in the 60s and 70s might not be necessarily what would be successful in these times. I feel like um, we have so many different pillars um, that needs to be dismantled, right? In, in a plethora of areas that I don't know if it can fall on one sole person, you know? So like BLM is tackling um, the issue of, you know, police brutality. Right. Well, we also have issues in education. You know, mm-hmm. we have issues in um, employment. We have issues in housing. And I just don't know if it can all fall on one person. Really, I feel like there's a lot of siloedness, which it it isn't um, effective either. You know, like all of the silos do need to come together and kind of collaborate, but kind of function in their own lane. And so what I think we're lacking so much is not a sole leader, but just organization. Like if we could have everything organized then I feel like it would create more of a mass movement that would be really impactful, if that makes any sense. No, I totally agree with that. The other question I really have is that because I feel like, I do do see where you're coming from, but I feel like you still need some type of leader for people to respect. And no one's really going to talk to a group. Everybody wants to talk to a person or persons that's leading something, right? Yeah. So if they are going to go ahead and go after this one particular pillar, then who are those people? What does that chapter look like? Like, yeah. you know, like what is that group? Everyone has gonna, is going to have some type of leader speaking for it, no matter what, in that particular yeah. area, that arena. I just don't feel like we're, we have that much of a louder voice. So maybe we're not using the tools that we have efficiently because we're quick to twerk. <laughs> yeah, that gets that gets seven gajillion hits. You know what I'm saying? Like we use social media, we know how to use social media. That's my thing. It's not like we don't. Yeah. You know, we know how to use the media. You know, we know how to get attention. I just don't feel like we're using it in the right in the right way. Because we if we protest. Why protest in the highway? Go to the Capitol building. Right. Where the people making decisions at. Right. You know, why do we keep on ignoring that? You know, go go make the the governor uncomfortable in front of his crib. Go protest in Buckhead and right in governor's mansion, you know what I'm saying, yeah. and bother him yeah. a little bit. That hasn't happened. But we tend to keep on protesting, which is great. But the locations to me as well it seems kind of like wh- where we are we really going for the right attention? You yeah. Know like, you know, are we really being heard or people are just saying, well, let them go through it. It's going to pass over. Give them a couple of weeks. And we'll forget about it. And I feel like that's where we're at right now to where, like I said, the new cycle has changed. Uh-huh. And because there isn't a particular leader or leaders speaking that they're not garnering their attention no more until uh, something else happens again. Like what happened in Philly. Yeah. So what happened in Philly now, that's getting attention because now there's more riots and stuff and there's a video of it. But they're kind, yeah. of, kind of quiet there. Like, when are we going to not stay shut and, and continue making noise and not getting comfortable saying, you know what, I'm good. I can pay my bills. I got a nice car. Right. It hasn't affected me personally yet. I'm not going to jump in. Like We have to really kind of sacrifice, I think, at both ends of the spectrum, no matter what. Yeah. I agree. I completely agree. It's, for me, you know, how how do we bring that motivation about you know that's that's a question because to your point there are going to be people that are comfortable where they're at you know and when you're fighting a war per se it's uncomfortable you know and although everybody has their position not everybody are soldiers you know some people are scribes some people are you know whatever the case is it all of it is uncomfortable you know because you're you're fighting and some people are just comfortable where they're at and so like the question for me is how even me as an individual how do I when I make contact with people bring about such an impact that they feel pushed to make an impact themselves you know what I mean because if people don't have the motivation to uh to join the struggle. I don't want to use the word struggle like that, but like, you know, to join the cause or to join the movement and to make steps 
to change their immediate surroundings, then it's going to be hard for a leader to rise up out of that. You know, I feel like there's a bunch of people are trying, you know, that they're, they've made their voices heard and, and all of that, but not on a national level because people are just not motivated to take them seriously, you know? But do we need to go national? Like, do we not focus locally first? And then that kind of the steam, you know, pick up a little bit to catch on. I think maybe, yeah. maybe maybe we're biting off too much we can chew trying to go national and not worrying about what's really, like let's say the issue in Ohio is different from the issue in Georgia. Mm-hmm. And like you said, there are different pillars. And if we are attacking those particular pillars as local to us as the biggest issues yeah. and making strides in those areas, then we can help out our kin in, in the next state or the next city over to help them out. Show them, hey, this is the path we went. You know, we can try to retrofit it for you based on your pillar, but let's really customize even more. But this is the plan we had. Yeah. And I don't think we share enough that way. Oh, no, we don't at all. Um, and I don't know what that is. I don't know if that's just this generation on how they interact with each other. Um, I do feel like the younger people don't have trust in the older generations at all to yeah. kind of carry out some of these um, ideals that we have, right? And so they would much more prefer to take things into their own hands um, without having much of the wisdom that comes with the older generation. Um, and I also think the older generation can, sometimes can be stuck in their ways and be way more traditional. And so I think also too, that's a balancing act that needs to be worked through um, because if that trust is not there, uh, you know, things are just not going to roll as smoothly as it should. I do agree that it is much easier to start locally. Um, if you think about it, that's how MLK started. Mm-hmm. He started locally. And exactly. then it, it just grew into this this big thing. And so, yeah, I do believe that that should happen. Um, but that even that takes a, a person or a group of people to care enough about another person's cause. Um, because something might not have been going on right then where they're at but they might see something in another state and they need to care enough, you know, to organize something and to do something there and to rally the people in that area. Uh, I just don't know if there's anyone like that, you know? Yeah. Do you feel uh, Colin Kaepernick has been too quiet? Uh, I don't know. I um, I haven't heard nothing from him really. No, I have, you mean like since he's been kind of like reinstated or whatever? Yeah. Yeah. No, I haven't. Um, I I don't know what's happening behind the scenes, you know, but he hasn't been, to my knowledge, as vocal. And I think his, I think his gravity before was extremely extremely change worthy to the environment i think it sparked something you know what i mean yeah and it's unfortunate that we haven't heard him come out um since you know on anything else i think that's unfortunate yeah i I do too i think like you said like you know he didn't spark something but sometimes just because someone sparks them doesn't mean that they're the ones to really hold the baton yeah the the whole time you know what i'm saying um, but, oh, I'm yeah. not, but I'm not sure like who he can pass it to. I don't know. <laughs> I don't even know if he still has it to pass. I feel like he yeah, I think he dropped it off somewhere. He was I like, right, I'm good. <laughs> Boom. I think he dropped the mic. Like, I'm good over here. I got my Nike deal. Um and he dropped it in a bush somewhere. Yeah, he was like, Oh, you want that still? <laughs> <laughs> and it's not to make light of it, you know what I'm saying? But it's like, you know, I, I follow him on IG, you know what I'm saying? You yeah. know, and I try to go to his page and he does post some things, but it's nothing that's really getting attention. Mm-hmm. And you know, yeah, he gets his likes, you know, people comment and stuff, but I don't it's not where we need it to be. And then yeah. and maybe I'm maybe I'm expecting too much. You know, maybe yeah. that's not what he wanted to do regardless. Maybe he just wanted to focus really on football, and I get that. That's his personal endeavor. Um yeah. I don't think he's ever gonna get a shot. I think that's that's done. 
So, mm-hmm. like, you know, yeah. a lot of times his, I hear more from his girlfriend, which she's a New York City um, DJ. Uh, mm-hmm. Think how okay. seven. So I hear more from her because she's she's you know, she's more vocal than him. Yeah. She stays protecting him all the time. She stays yeah. backing him up. But it's like, okay, well, that's cool, but he's the one that know. You know what I'm saying? He's the one that knelt down and 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 really put this on blast. Let's carry this out. But to your point is like, you know, maybe times have changed. Maybe that, that's not the thing. But we had to figure out then what is the thing. Uh-huh. You know, because we can't just let... Because writing is not going to do anything. It's going to show our anger. It's going to show we fucking pissed off. It's going to show that we're fucking tired of it. But it's not going to change any laws. It's not going to change anybody's thought process of us. Yeah. What we really need is a seat at the table. You know, so I know people gave flack to Jay-Z, right? When he sat with the NFL. Whether you agree with him or not, he sat at the table. And then the past couple of years, the NFL has been enlightened all of a sudden. Whether that was from Kaepernick, maybe, or mm-hmm. like I said, maybe it was Jay Z instead. And they say, "Oh, now we know what Colin Kaepernick was trying to do." Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then, then all of a sudden, Cap got that that tryout down here in Georgia, right? A couple of years mm-hmm. ago, last year. And then the NFL now, when they had the last Super Bowl, you know, they had, you know, more kind of protesty music or whatever, and had they, they didn't they didn't mind the whole stance thing, mm-hmm. and then from that, that point, now you see them doing commercials, right? And it was, yeah. it was more about, you know, about people of color. And that was when Jay-Z took, and Jay-Z got a lot of flack for that. So I'm like, oh, you know, you've been whitewashed, you know, your Uncle Tom, while you're sitting with them. But when did you ignore them? Like, even MLK had to go to the White House and try to get that bill passed. That's true. Even when he, he knew he wasn't being listened to. And he kept on, kept on until he was right there at the signing of the bill for the yeah. civil rights movement. You're right. I mean, it even goes towards um, Ice Cube meeting with the president. And yeah. how he got, he got a lot of, he got shit on for that. What makes no sense? Oh, yeah. And I think that's a smart thing to do. I, I don't know. Um, I don't know why people don't quite understand that you kind of have to attack this issue from several different angles. And if if the government is what it is, at some point you're going to have to face the government head on. You right. know what I mean? Like you can't avoid it. You can't create your own government within a government. No. It doesn't quite work that way. And from what I know, there isn't very much uninhabited islands or continents in the world to where everybody can move to. So you have to, <laughs> <laughs> you have to um, face them at some point. It's, it's very interesting to me, the, the uproar that people have about situations like that. Yeah, because when, when Ice Cube had been on CNN and they misconstrued everything he was trying to do. Oh, absolutely. And then they canceled his interview and then he wound up coming back on to interview. And he was speaking to um, Chris Cuomo. Mm-hmm. And even the introduction that Chris Cuomo had gave for him was totally wrong. Mm-hmm. And Ice Cube was like, listen, I don't care who's in power. I need to speak to who's in power. He right. said, so I have this plan. And I, I sent it to the Biden people. They said, yo, we'll look at it after the election. Mm-hmm. And I said to Trump, he said, yo, why don't you come through? Mm-hmm. Am I not going to go for the invite and get a plate? Right. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, right. Just, and then when I looked at the comments on Twitter, I, I, you know, I followed him as well. And I'm like, what are these people talking about? Then how do you get things done? If you don't want nobody to talk to the, to the people that's, that's in charge, because you feel like nothing's going to happen, mm-hmm. then we riot, nothing happens. Mm-hmm. Then what the fuck do we do? Mm-hmm. But I'll, every time someone wants to try something different, call them Uncle Tom. You know what I'm saying? Like not every person that's trying to do something not, is a freaking Uncle Tom. And right. that's my question. Like we're so used to beating each other up and putting each other down that the people that's on the outside are saying, yeah, they're doing it to themselves. Just yeah. stand back. Yeah, absolutely true. I mean, people call people Uncle Toms. I'm not quite sure they know 
what an Uncle Tom is or mm-hmm. if they've ever read that book. I mean, I don't right. think they would. <laughs> <laughs> so when you use that term so loosely, I don't. <laughs> it's very interesting. I don't know. And I, I can't even pinpoint it to a certain age group or generation because I think that is that expands all of that. It's a yeah. mindset that. I, I honestly believe has been instilled in uh, people of color since enslavement of all kinds, you know, and and dis- discriminatory actions of all kinds that kind of instilled this. Well, if you're talking to someone that looks like my oppressor, then you must be out to get me, you know, um, instead of mm-hmm. understanding wholly of the collaborativeness that needs to happen for things to change in a system in which we live in you know it'd be different if we lived in a different type of system that's that's not how the world works and so to function in that you have to if you can talk to the head then you talk to the head i don't know if they're trying to decapitate the head i'm not sure that it doesn't make any sense to me you know so what do you say to people who say you know what you people got millionaires. You got you got a nice you know degree. You you're at you're at the office with me. You got the okay. you, got, you have the office right down the hall from me. You know what I'm saying? You're sitting at the table, and mm-hmm. then they say, "Why are you complaining? Why are you still why are you still driving about the slave the slave issue?" Right. What do you say about that? Part of it is a compassion for my neighbor, you know, if you're talking to me personally, um, that we don't live in this world with a thought of just ourselves because then no one would be successful. Um, And so if you're thinking about the people that are around you um, and you see the type of um, destruction that people have experienced, then through compassion, just for me personally, would be one of the reasons why I would care or would say something. Uh, And then also, uh, I mean, we live in the space where no one is guaranteed anything, you know? So I could be sitting at one place at one time and be in a completely different space um, at another time, you know? And you have to kind of remind yourself that it was those people around you that probably helped you get to the spot that you're in. Right. And if roles were reversed, you would have wanted them to think of you, you know? Yeah. Uh, it's all it's all a world of just currency. And so you put in what you want people to put in, you know? And part of that is just being considerate and knowing that you can't live in this bubble um, and totally neglect to see or understand, you know, things that's happening around you that are hurting people around you. It would be my personal answer. No, yeah, no, I love that. That's that's straight from the heart. I like that. And, you know, you're right. There's some of my friends that I have that are white that they're cool. I love them. They don't fucking understand shit. They don't get it. <laughs> and I explained to them, you know what I'm yeah. saying? Like, but they don't get it. Then I came from, 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 you know, moving from Brooklyn to the South, man, that was a culture shock for me. Uh-huh. And the white and black people in the South are different from the white and black people in the North. Uh-huh. It's a different thing. For sure. And, but the similarities are, again, is if you're entrenched in the culture, then we do have allies, you know what I'm saying? In the 60s, they had allies, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? And they had white allies. And I think, and that, I think that's what helped to move it forward as well. Like we need to understand that we need those allies again mm-hmm. to go to the next level. You know, yeah, we can do it ourselves and, and get, go and keep on pushing, but we need those people to say, aha, wow, wow, I get what you're saying. I understand, mm-hmm. I, you know, I can be empathetic I would never really truly f- understand it, you know what I'm saying? But I, I get it, you know what I'm yeah. saying? And let me see, let me use my connects to help you guys out. And that's what has to happen. It has to be kind of like a trade, a barter system, 
you know, for like networking pieces to make our movement move forward. And mm-hmm. how we, I believe we still need those allies today to connect with the networks and to get us to the next level. Mm-hmm. Uh, but again, I think we have to figure something out. Is that a, 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 you know, a Black Panther chapter that comes up in, in Atlanta? You know what I'm saying? Like I said, and then we, we show the next city in Detroit how to do it or New York or LA, like we got to get more organized. We just do. And we have to see what organization looks like so then people have a model. Because again, just, we can get people out to protest. Fantastic. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? But then what? Yeah. Because I don't trust no either party, to be honest with you. You know what I'm saying? I really don't. You know, the Democrats just want this want our vote because they think they have a foot in the door with us. You know what I'm saying? They do cool shit to try to make us think they understand us. The Republicans mm-hmm. are pretty much straight out say, hey, you want to join us, join us, but you know, we ain't gonna cater to you. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. when, then what do we do? Do we start our own third party? Because it's supposed yeah. to be a multi-party system. That's true. Constitution, like the forefathers said, that they actually didn't want a two-party system, and yeah. both and both parties are really good about knocking down a third party that comes up. Mm-hmm. You know, the Democrats are really good about putting things underneath their umbrella. So, the socialist thing with AOC or Bernie Sanders, they were supposed to have broken off, and then they were like, "No, nah, no, nah, just be Democrat still, but do it underneath us. We won't lose any votes." Mm-hmm. And then the party was coming up years ago, and Republicans just shot him in the head. They were like, "Yo." Y'all done. Y'all ain't trying to fuck with our votes. Right. And so that's what people need to really look at and understand how politics really work. And we can't be ignorant of the fact that if ISU wants to go and use his power that he has now, because he's in all types of entertainment business, you name it, he's in it. Uh-huh. And he wants to do something like that. We should be any supporting him in that endeavor. Say, yo, matter of fact, let us check what you got. Let's, 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 let's make sure that you know you're gonna look really good when you go up there for us. Absolutely. And what else I can we, you know, add to it? But again, like what we're so used to self-hating, man. My my daughter's an Afro-Latina, my wife's an Afro-Latina. So that means they're, they're black Puerto Ricans. I gotta tell my daughter every day she's beautiful. I gotta tell her that her curly hair is amazing looking. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Her skin tone is amazing, she's beautiful. And that's coming from me. And I'm white as hell. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So if I don't tell her that and she would hear that from me, then she's going to think she's ugly. She's going to think that her curls are stupid. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, and then I got to tell my wife, you make sure that you, you do your own thing. You may straighten your hair out, but let her know why you straighten your hair out. You know what I'm saying? Not because you dislike your curls. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? Don't let her hear that you don't like your curls. Because my mm-hmm. wife grew up totally different where she was told, straighten your hair out because you look stupid with your curls. Mm-hmm. That was a different generation that was saying on yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So it's like things like that we got to get better at. We got to love each other and love ourselves before we love anybody else. Oh, yeah. It starts with our own communities and our own homes. It yeah. starts with our own homes. You know what I mean? Like, um, I and my partner, Gino, actually had this conversation prior. Um, something similar to the conclusion that we came up with was if you don't start changing where you're at, you can't change anywhere else, you know? So it starts with the interaction in families in your home, and that spills out into your neighborhood, that spills out into your community, and so on and so forth. It has to start with us as individuals in our homes, yeah. teaching our children who they are and how valuable and outstanding they are and for them to enjoy life just the same way that their counterpart does. You know, and it, and it doesn't mean that they should wish that their counterpart doesn't enjoy life. Yeah. That that they both should be enjoying life together. You know, I, yeah, I really right. do believe it, it. It starts at that level. So I totally agree. You know, something I thought about just now is like, you know what, like we don't really. I guess this generation, of past few years, past decades, maybe, like knowing your neighbor has become such like a a standoffish type of thing now. Mm-hmm. Like if I was oh, yeah. if I was running away from somewhere, I was in trouble and I couldn't make it to my home. And all I could do is knock on my neighbor's door. Mm-hmm. They're not going to open that shit for me. 
Mm-hmm. They don't know who the hell I am. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, when did that stop? You know what I'm saying? Like, when did we become so just like standoffish and so like, you know, unapproachable? You know, and I can't yeah. front, I'm guilty of that shit too. Like, you know, like when I first came down here from New York, I bought my first house and mm-hmm. I wasn't trying to be meet nobody. And then my neighbor <laughs> would wave from across the street, I'm like, yo, what's up? Like, keep it moving. You know, mm-hmm. so then, but then I didn't know how to work a lawnmower. I was like, what the hell is this? I didn't know what the hell Walmart was. I was like, well, never, I've never seen this place before. You know what I'm saying? So I was like, I couldn't ask nobody to go, whatever I go to get some stuff. And I could have, I could have just befriended my neighbors. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And it became to a point after a number of years, yeah, we, we there were some neighbors on the, on the same street that my kids would play with, we went to school with, and we got to know their parents, but it was to our kids. It wasn't because we were adults and said, yo, Welcome to the neighborhood, or thank you, or hey, how you doing? I saw you passing by, blah, 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 what's your name? And it took our kids to be in the same classroom in order for us to connect. Yeah. And if and if we can't connect to that local over level, then we don't got a fucking chance. Yeah. Yeah. On the real. I, I totally see your point, because I'm, I'm guilty of the same thing. Although people in my neighborhood are, are a bit more friendly, than other neighborhoods I've lived in. So they're kind of like imposed themselves upon me and kind of like forced me to say hi. (laughs) But I'm not not the type of person to just, you know, be over the fence like, hey neighbor, how are you? Totally. But I do think that we should do that. Definitely do think that that is a stepping point to, because, you know, that, that really ties in even into the topic of tonight. What you don't know is what you fear, you know? What's in close proximity to you and what you know is what you care about, you know? And so if you don't, if you're not introduced to people or things or whatever, you fear it, you know? Absolutely. And so absolutely, if we take the time out to just know the people that we come in contact with, you know, that that does a lot. You know, and, it, and it, it's funny because you said that it took your children to be in the same classroom and because children are open, right? Like my yeah. son will go and make friends with just about anybody at this point. And I'm like, don't, you know, you don't know these people, but my son is open and he's friendly and he's like, it's a new person. Let me introduce myself. And so just to have that mentality of a child, you know, to be humble and open to see the good in people before we see, you know, something to be feared. That says a lot. That's... No, I just, I think that just, because that brings attention to a lot of stuff that opens up more of a, like a Pandora's box to where, you know, as Americans, are we that afraid of everything? Because yeah. we? Do, is everyone really a stranger? Is everyone really going to come and get us? Yeah, there's bad people out there, no doubt about it. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. But is everybody in a white man suspect? <laughs> You know what I'm yeah. saying? Like, you yeah. know, like, is every neighbor a nosy neighbor you don't want to get to meet? So have we really classified and stereotyped every person that way? And as, as Americans, we're just like, because I'm, I'm tired of all the, I guess with the pronouns, I, I hate being called Hispanic American. I don't know how you feel yeah. like being called African American. Yeah. That just forms more separation. That makes no sense to me. Mm-hmm. You know, since we live in New York, it's, in New York alone, they speak 160 languages in New York. That's how dense and worldwide New York is. And yeah, there's mm-hmm. racial issues there too. You know what I'm saying? But there's more mixing of the minds. You know, there's more mm-hmm. mixing together, period. My family's like a United Nations. My cousin converted to become Muslim because she married a Pakistani dude. You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? I married an Ecuadorian chick. My cousin married a Dominican cat. My other cousin married a black dude. So we, like, we're all jacked up. You know what I'm saying? My, my, my cousins have Chinese, have Puerto Rican. So we're all just jacked yeah. up. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's, but that's New York, though. Right? That's the representation mm-hmm. of that. But I guess my point is that, you know, again, like being open to things, not being so afraid and just you know, knocking yourself behind your door with 17 locks in the door. And then you look into your shades, yeah. you make sure no one's there. And you get your two guns on you, like, ready for somebody to pop off. And you have your ring camera on your door. And it's like, why are we protecting ourselves so much? And is that the plan? Mm-hmm. Is the plan for us to really be separated that much? You know what I'm saying? From I, I really think, yeah, I think that's like, 
I think that is a direct result of just the leadership that we've been on under for centuries. I think this is like part of PTSD or something. You know yeah, what I, I mean? Like almost every leadership that we've had has used some form of fear tactic, especially surrounding another group of people to to garner the adoration or the trust that they were looking for in the population, almost all of them. Yeah. And so, if, you know, you have a, a, a community of people that go through that time and time and time again, it's almost like instilled at that point. Yeah. And I just think it's like trauma, you know, like a reaction yeah. to trauma. And I honestly believe that things like that can even be replicated on a cellular level. Like it could be passed down without us even knowing and it'd be so ingrained that it surpasses psychological. That it's like in our, even it's in our cells to react to certain things. Yes, yeah, it's just DNA passed do. down. Yeah. Yeah. You just, you're really right. Right. Because the kids just kids are just gonna mimic what you what they're taught or what they see. They they're with the parents 24-7. So if mm-hmm. mom and dad is antisocial, then most likely they're gonna be antisocial. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? If mom and dad are you know the the, the above average type where they're gonna be engaging and they go everywhere, then the kids are gonna probably you know pick that up as well. Yeah. I wanna say it's tough, but it really it really isn't. It's not tough. You know, I think we really have to start pulling ourselves out of, out of ourselves and not be so so much bigger than what we are. Be a little more humble. Oh, yeah. Care a little more. Yeah. You know, like, every day I try to do at least one thing nice for someone, but I know I'm not. Yeah. Uh, this week I haven't done nothing yet. <laughs> but I, I kind of, <laughs> nothing has happened for me to be nice about. <laughs> I haven't seen my neighbors. <laughs> so, yeah. You know, but but that's my goal every day. I try to do something nice. So that's me at Dunkin' Donuts buy my wife coffee. I pay for the person behind me. That jacked me up yeah. one time. That person order was thirty two damn dollars. I was pissed. <laughs> yeah, they weren't just buying a big one. <laughs> so <laughs> yeah, so I was like, damn. I was like, all right, whatever, fuck it. So I was like, good, get it done. Yeah. And then, and then I I saw my neighbor. She was and she's an older woman. I helped her into her car. You know, mm-hmm. even with the COVID thing happening, she just wasn't going to make it to her car. You know, mm-hmm. someone, someone randomly had parked in the handicapped spot that was a handicap. She had to park her car a few spots away and she really couldn't get into her property. So I had to pull her car out for her and the whole jazz. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So I felt good after that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. That was fantastic. Um, I helped somebody randomly out um, with their spare tire. You know what I'm saying? It was a, it was a girl, it was a chick. But if it was a dude, I probably wouldn't have done it. <laughs> so, yeah, you know what I'm saying? So, but she was thankful. She tried to give me money. I was like, nah, don't give me, it's not about payment. You know what I'm saying? Like, I saw you, yeah. you I saw you crying on the side of the road. Like, you look distressed. So I came through. Thanks for not calling the yeah. cops. <laughs> that was my biggest thing. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But right. um, I guess my question for you, because bring it back to the Beyonce Taylor situation is, is, is the cop situation how they had the no-knock warrant they only prosecuted the cop that shot from the outside. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. he broke protocol from shooting from outside into, you know, a, a space where he couldn't see, which made no sense to me whatsoever. Um, there was a neighbor, I think, or two that was above, uh, above that lived above beyond the and her boyfriend that said that he did hear the cops say um, there, there were police, but who's to say that they heard it inside if their room was all the way in the back and they're banging uh-huh. on a trying to talk to a door. You know what I'm saying? Uh-huh. So all that being said, you know, I think I thought her boyfriend was was heroic. You know, he got his gat, he he bucked shots, he's like, screw this, like, you know what? Uh-huh. Boom. Um it just made no sense to me that they went to her crib instead of trying to find her ex-man that they were trying to really look for, you know. Uh-huh. The intel was all wrong. It made no damn sense to me. If they was mm-hmm. if they was doing this, and they searched the city, had several different spots they were searching for her ex man, right? Mm-hmm. And her particular location was so far off the map they had of where he was on that it made no damn sense. Then they said they had someone that was watching her 
but they didn't see this guy at all. So mm-hmm. why don't you still do a no knock warrant though? You know what I'm saying? Everything just sounded so like they just didn't care. Mm-hmm. They just wanted to grab someone to grab someone. They just want you know, and I know that everyone's talking about defund the police. I'm not sure that's the right word to use. You know what I'm saying? That's just that's just my opinion. I think we should like, you know, definitely reform the police. But mm-hmm. when people say defund, is that okay? What do you mean by that? You know what I'm yeah. saying? We know what it means. Other people don't know what it means. They think it's, yeah. it's, it's for what it's for what it means. Defund means take away. Right. And that and that's it. You know, right. so, and again, because we don't have no true leader, it's not clear the mission with right. it. You know what I'm saying? Right. Totally get it. Yeah. So I, I just I'm not where, where do you stand with that? I mean, first off, with the whole um, Breonna Taylor case, it was just a horrible uh, grievance of injustice. Like, it was a failure on the justice system from beginning to end of everything that took place in that. And, and just using that as an example of insight of how many times that possibly happens throughout the country, right. you know? Um, is unfathomable when it comes to because you know I've had the I was going to say the luxury but I don't know if that's a luxury but I've had the experience of working with law enforcement I was uh, in nine one one dispatch for some years and uh, you know words do matter um, and especially for trying to especially if we're trying to communicate in a way in which we're trying to let the other pe- uh, the other side know the infraction and know what the result or the outcome that we want to see, we definitely need to choose our words wisely. Um, defunding the police, you know, just gives off the connotation that, well, then who's going to police our streets, which it just means that everyone's going to run havoc, right? right? I agree that reformation, I agree, would be a much better word, you know, um, reforming the police. And I think more oftentimes than not, the police force is open to reformation, more times than not. Um, there are definitely cities, you know, where they're just outrageous. But in the totality of things, I think they are open to having conversations and really revisiting their policies and their structures to change things. Because whether they want to do it to prevent one of their people from getting in trouble in the future, or if they want to do it because they actually care about the communities they serve, in either case, they're more likely wanting to do it, you know? Um, I think if we again, pointing to the leadership that needs to be had, but to clearly define, you know, what our goals are, and, and not just in for BLM and, and the, in police reformation, but in everything, just having it outlined on these are what we ask for, you know? If people that are on a strike from a labor force are able to come together and write down demands, Mm-hmm. and then present it, then, you know, like we as a community need to be able to clearly write down our demands, I guess, in this case, and say, this is what we mean by this and use our words in the way in which we mean them. But I also, I, I think that there are a few people that literally want to defund the police. I think yes. I've heard, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Um, which is interesting. I want to know what their solution would be for people not for it not being like the purge around. Well, that's that's my thing. That's exactly what would happen. Like, like men. Because listen, I'm not sure women know, but men are unhinged all day long, and we have mm-hmm. it's like it's like lion. It's like being a lion in a field of gazelles, but you can't eat the damn gazelle. And interesting. when a man is around a woman. You know, all we all we thinking about is, is about sex all damn time. You know what I'm saying? That's okay. all we're thinking about. That's yeah. what we're made up of. And that's and any man yeah. took that, 
bullshit. You know what I'm saying? Every man thinks it. We talk about it all the damn time. That's what we talk about. Barbershop, you name it. That's what we fucking talk about, right? Who yeah. we like to smash, who we want to smash, who we like, we like to smash, and who we know we can <laughs> smash. You know what I'm saying? That's all we fucking talk about. We don't yeah. talk about, we don't talk about, talk about important topics. Get the fuck out of here with that. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, that's our thought process. Yeah. So if and when the police are to go away, you don't think they'll be trying to pillage the village and rape the women right away? Right. But the quickness, they, the, things would change back into some like medieval fucking times. Mm-hmm. That's just how men operate. Yeah, you have a couple of guys who probably say, no, don't do this. You know, let's try to make this happen. And they will probably be the first to die. On the real. Because mm-hmm. the hardcore ones are going to make things happen really quick. And then people are just going to follow suit. Because we're natural followers. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? We're social yeah. creatures. We want to be some, part of some type of tribe. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And when you're part of a tribe, you're gonna you're gonna defend it. And I think that's what police officers do. They're part of this special tribe. They defend each other no matter what. Yeah. It's unfortunate. Yeah. And, and kind of connecting that neighbor piece I was talking about earlier with us, they're just as bad and disconnected from the neighborhood they're patrolling. Oh yeah. Back when I was a kid in Brooklyn, we had a beat cop, and the beat cop walks the neighborhood. He don't have no car. He just walk in the neighborhood. Mm-hmm. And he would go into the grocery store. He would go to the bodega on the corner. He would stop by my stoop and say, hey, hello, kids, what's going on? Like, we knew him. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? He would talk to my mother. She was out in the window because that's what, you know, Puerto Rican moms just chill out in the window with a pillow in the window cell watching the kids play. And she was mm-hmm. the shit with my mom. Cops are, are in mm-hmm. tinted window chargers looking real threatening, just hiding in a cut somewhere. You know what I'm saying? Fast. <laughs> dating already. You know what I'm saying? So it's like right. your tent's darker than mine. You putting me over, putting me over for my tent. You know what I'm right. So if you can't obey the law, and I get it, they have a lot of computers in their car. They got weapons and stuff. So the less people can see, the less than time people to try to break into their shit. So I, I get the whole yeah. tent stuff. But still, you're still putting me over for my tent. That's something different. Then at that point, the engagement we already have, and I kind of get it, like. My my cousin my cousin was was a was a cop for NYPD for twenty five years. Mm-hmm. And he broke it down to me like this. I spoke to him years ago, and this was maybe over 10, 15 years ago. And he told me like, "Listen, he's like, you know, I've seen a baby put in a microwave. You know, I've seen a woman get beat to death. You know, I've seen someone slice their neck wide open." He and he's like, "I had to. I seen this in twenty five years." He said, like, "You don't think that fucks with someone's head?" Yeah. These police officers are dealing with that type of of of. Of viewing trauma, trauma. yeah, that, they were, and then they're working with PTSD, and then that, and they know if they say that in their world, they're gonna get pulled mm-hmm. if they can't function. Mm-hmm. So they lie about their, their their mind state, their state of mind. You know what I'm saying? So where's the help for them even? And it's not to glaze over any situation that we've seen by brutality from police, because that's that's the decision at that point. Mm-hmm. You know, so you're making the decision to beat someone's ass. Yeah. But at the same time, too, if they lost it because they seen too many babies in the microwave fucking exploded or whatever, they really don't hear yeah. about the news on cover shit like that. Or you see a truckload of girls who got, who got kidnapped about to be trafficked, you know what I'm saying? That uh-huh. all that is real is real talk. Like, what are we doing for our police officers? Uh-huh. As far as their mental state, are they getting proper, you know, um counseling? once a week, once a month, whatever that may look like to help them do their issues and not reprimand them if they have a true issue. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Or don't look like you're a punk ass because it's it's hard. We, back home in New York, we said the biggest gang in New York is police, the police department. Yeah. NYPD has 40,000 police officers. It's the biggest wow. in the country. It's a small damn army. They got boats, they got helicopters, they got dogs, they got tanks, they got everything. And that's only for five counties, five boroughs. 40,000 yeah. people, but you got 9 million people in five, in five counties. You know what I'm saying? But at the same time, too, like, like the engagement has to change because I got pulled over walking when I was a kid. I always fit the script. I have my baggy car can I jeans on. You know what I'm saying? I was I was all tripped out, Yankee cap on. Oh, you fit the description. What description do I fit? I'm walking, I'm walking to the damn train station. Right. So the so profiling was always a thing. Profiling has never just become a new thing. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? But then when we comply, or we if we don't comply, 
and we want to try to challenge them, it never goes in our favor if we try to challenge them. Mm-hmm. And I'm not sure why we continue to challenge them anyway. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? No doubt, yeah, we need to challenge. But in that moment, is that the right place to challenge it? Yeah, I, I don't think so. But I, I almost feel like, especially if it's a man, oh, kind yeah, of like you get... your knee-jerk reaction is to defend yourself. Like It's a respect thing for what, us. Yeah, like, wait a minute, you know, I didn't do anything or, you know, yeah. why are you... Uh, pulling me over it, it's kind of like you're not thinking at that moment most of the time let me not say anything let me just put my hands up you mm-hmm. know until that officer kind of repeats it more than once and then it kind of breaks through that and you're like oh wait a minute yeah let me put my hands up by that time you know who knows what state of mind that cop is in but I think it's almost like a knee-jerk reaction you know yeah absolutely yeah and and, and, you know, it's it's unfortunate that, it's beyond unfortunate that we can't even experience that knee-jerk reaction. You know what I mean? Like, we have to even quell that. Um, and that's not even something that you can necessarily control. You know? Right. But you, you, you have to put filters upon your filters just in case this person that I'm talking to um, is going to act irrational or is going to act out of fear at that present moment, you know? It's it's hard. And I, I definitely agree that there needs to be a sit down between, you know, the police force of each, at each level with BLM representation to really hash out what the issues are and what needs need to be met, you know? I really think that conversation needs to happen. I think there's a lot of like forthcoming forthcoming information during the protests and such. But again, if we're talking about starting local, um, those one-on-one meetings, especially in locations where sometimes the officers don't even see a black person for like my like that's just not the community that they serve right those conversations need to happen you know no you're right absolutely right i just again i guess i keep on harping on this but again the leadership piece i don't i don't even hear local leaders i don't hear reverends speaking up i don't hear pastors speaking up at all and we're talking about we're in the bible belt where there's mega churches with ten thousand parishioners and they're quick you know they're quick to ask for a rolls royce you know, Crawford Dollars asked for a freaking plane. You know uh-huh. what I'm saying? You know, you got New Birth, which is huge, out in the gun in Conyers. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't hear nothing from them. Uh-huh. We're local. You know what I'm saying? They, they can command the media real quick. Yeah. You, know, you just don't hear it. And that, that's, that's my question. Are, are, we, are we too far advanced, some of us, right? Because not everyone is that they just want to fuck up what they got. Again, like, you know what I'm saying? Or, 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 they don't want to mess up their money. Because yeah. everyone's quick to say this is wrong, but no one's saying I wanted to sacrifice all this to to stand out and let's, I mean, lead the charge. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I, and I get it, times have changed, but the people who are in charge operate from the past anyway. Mm-hmm. So until we get our foot, you know, I see at the table to show them how we really want to do things, we're going to have to operate at their level as well mm-hmm. and switch it up. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like, it, it just comes out to be like just heartbreaking. Like, you know, like my sons look at it like a gambit of, of just different shades. So some conversations I got to have, like, yo, this is how I need you to answer the police. I need you to freaking text me have an auto text. I had my sons create a shortcut in, in their iPhone. So as soon as they get put over, they start recording on their phone. They, they say, please recording. It pops up and starts recording. You know what I'm saying? Like, I did all that with them. Then some my other sons, I don't have to do that. And when I say sons, I got nine kids, people, so that the, the people know I've been busy. So yeah. <laughs> um, there's just as bad as I am. Not that I don't worry about them, but they don't get fucked with like that. My other sons do. Cause they got the nappy here, they got the dark skin. You know what I'm saying? 
So it's yeah. like, even in my own household, is like the conversations are different. Yeah. And it's, and it's messed up, but it's reality. Yeah. It's even my little daughter, my daughter, like, you know, she's 12. She loves to wear her hoodie. And she goes, I walk the dog. I say, take the hoodie off. I, I cannot have you walk the dog with the hoodie on. Just take it off. I need no one mistaking you for somebody else and something happens. Mm-hmm. Just take the damn hoodie off. Come back inside, put the hoodie on. I don't care. You know what I'm saying? But yeah. White people don't have to worry about telling their kids, yo, take your hoodie off. Yeah. Don't put your uh-huh. hoodie on out in the street. We're having a conversation with them about, hey, when the police stop you, do this. They're not having those conversations. Never. There's not even yeah. a thought in their freaking head. That's not, not a type of conversation. Yeah, for sure. It, it reminds me, and, and it all comes down to, you know, again, communication. Because, uh, so for instance, like my pastor is involved in like a small kind of coalition in Rockdale with like other pastors and religious leaders. Um, just kind of talking about racial tension race relations especially in that area because you know rockville county is mm-hmm. more wider than most <laughs> oh yeah. And, <laughs> yeah and so just kind of having those conversations and they had a conversation just like that um it was him and his son and another pastor who was white and his son and they were explaining like the son and fathers were explaining to each other the conversations that they have to have you know and to your point the white pastor had never had to even have thought about having a conversation about being pulled over with his son, you know? Um, But just because we were able to kind of view that conversation from the outside, it was very, it was hopeful because in them speaking, um, you were able to see kind of like the enlightenment in the white pastor's eyes, like, the, you know, I think I understand, you know, or or this is why this reaction happens out of people that don't look like me. So that's hopeful, you know, like if we're able to have more conversations, honest conversations like this, like I also, you know, see different um conversations happening on LinkedIn, for instance, with like in the HR space or um different, I think they had one in the medical space as well, where people of different cultures are coming together and saying, this is what racism looks like here, like in this realm. And this is what needs to happen to change that. And and you just see kind of like people's eyes open most of the time, not all the time, but most of the time where they're like, I did not know that before. And like a light kind of change or turns on or sparks. I think that these conversations just need to continue um, and the education. And I know a lot of people feel like, you know, it's not on us to educate um, other people. You know, it's kind of like on them to garner that information. But if someone has no interest, if I have no interest in sewing, I'm never going to learn about sewing. (laughs) Not ever. Ever. I have no interest (laughs) in it. Why would would I Google sewing? Because... People Google the most random stuff, right? Right. But then when there's something real simple from Google, what do they want to do? I can't find nothing. I can't, I don't know who to ask. But you'll Google anything else. Right. You know what I'm saying? So if, again, if I don't know nothing about sewing, I don't care about sewing, I'm not going to be interested in trying to figure that out. Yeah. And honestly, white people, again, it's not, and it's not a blanket statement because I got some cool white people friends. I've worked with a lot of cool white people. But... Yeah. A lot of them, (laughs) they just have no clue, no idea how other cultures operate. Because honestly, sorry to say, white people, you don't have no culture. Middle of my potato is not a culture. You know what I'm saying? (laughs) You You know, like you're always on black culture because you went from what from from jazz, you know, from from to soul to funk to R and B to hip hop. They jumped on the bandwagon for all that. Oh, and rock, I forgot. You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? Because Elvis did not create rock and roll. <laughs> so, you know what I'm saying? So, you know what I'm saying? So, yeah, they jumped on, the, on, on all those cultures, all those pieces of culture, and 
They're like, oh, wow, yeah, we like that music. And then mm-hmm. black people were great for entertainment only purposes. Mm-hmm. Want to see you play ball. Love to see you play that piano. Oh, yeah, I'll, I'll, let you, I'll let you be on TV as long as you entertain me. But growing up, all I had was a Cosby show. I didn't have mm-hmm. nothing else. I had the Brady Bunch, I had the Osmonds, had, you know, Eight is Enough, like a bunch of white shows. Yeah. No one looked like me or my fam on TV. Yeah. So the Cosby's came in like early 90s. I was like, oh, what is this? He's a doctor and she's a lawyer. Mm-hmm. What? <laughs> Who's yeah. <telling> lies? <laughs> like, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And then sure. the Fresh Prince came. Man, that changed my world. Then the yeah. world was a different world. I love the different world. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? They actually touch on the issues that we're talking about now. Mm-hmm. So if you people don't know, a different world was a kind of a spin-off show from the Cosby show, you know, sent from one of the daughters, which was Lisa Bonet. She mm-hmm. was really pregnant. She had to leave the show, but the show continued. And it was a they touched on they were, it was based off a they were in college. Based, it was, I think it was in Georgia. It had a fake college, but it was it sounded like Spellman, but it was yeah, it was kind of like Howard, like Hillman. It was called I think it was called Hillman, or yeah, something like that. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. So, you know, and it was a great show that touched on a lot of topics, you know, love relationships, but also like you know, social injustices too. They touched on. Mm-hmm. Um, so find it on Hulu, you know, YouTube, it, Prime. Look at it somewhere around there. I think I think it might be on Prime. Um, but man, like, you know, and again, like white people didn't have to worry about seeing representation of themselves ever. They grew up just automatically seeing themselves on TV or on billboards or whatever. So when Black Panther came out and people got hype, they got confused as fuck. Yeah. Yeah. They couldn't, they didn't yeah. understand why, why are you guys getting happy for this? Uh-huh. Cause like yo, we, we never had that shit. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's it's funny because like when you said um like white people in general does, doesn't have a culture, I think the migration for both, and this isn't even something that I realized until tonight when you made that statement. I think the migration to the Americas for both cultures or for both groups of people, um forced us to lose our culture because absolutely if, George if you look, yeah because yeah. if, if you look in if you look into European countries and their history there is absolutely a culture there yes you know throughout Europe Europe and in every single country there there's a culture there was you know a people and tribes and and all sorts of stuff and I think the migration um here, even for them, lost a lot of that culture in translation, you know? Um, and I think it's easy for us to identify that, you know, you know, us as a collective, there's a lot of us that don't have, that we're not in tune with their culture, but I don't think they are at all, at wow. all. And so it's, it's almost like, because like you were saying, they gravitate towards kind of the um, African-American culture that's being created in the Americas. They gravitate towards it, I think, so easily because they themselves, they find it hard to identify. Unless they have like direct lineage that, you know, tells right, them yeah. about their olden days in Ireland or something. Like, unless they have that they don't really have a connection to their culture either, you no. know? They celebrate so Cinco de Mayo. Sense. They don't want Mexicans, but they want their food and they want their, their day. They're, they're, why are we celebrating the revolution of Mexico for? Which I don't think that's a revolution of Mexico anyway. Like, you know, Cinco <laughs> de Mayo, you know, and they're pretty quick to celebrate. It. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So it, like, it, it, it's just mixed. You know, again, like I said, the cultural piece, is, it's like they're thriving for something that they can't, they don't have. They're trying to yeah. make it their own, you know, and they, they dilute it, they whiteify it, you know what I'm saying? They don't put no no salt, no pepper in it, you know what I'm saying? It's bland. And yeah. and that's and it's, it's unfortunate because I love my culture. I love being Puerto Rican because we have African, you know, culture in it as well. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Our, our salsa music is straight up from Africa. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? The percussions are straight up African. The food I just made tonight, I'm frying empanadas with spatelios and, and, and bananas. That's Africans. Africans show us how to do that shit. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like, that's as all African based. 
and you you're actually right like, you know when, when both both groups came over you know, your language even when exactly where you came from you don't know yeah you can't like you could get a, a gene test but it's going to tell you some random you might be part of west africa that tells you nothing yeah you know what I'm saying? that's just a continent you know what i'm saying you don't, yeah. that doesn't particularly tell you what tribe you're from or nothing like that that's going to be lost forever you will never right. know and honestly white people they most likely will never know either a lot of them have no idea they may no think idea. they're dutch but they're actually really german they have no idea yeah. where, where they come from or what they're about and they have no yeah. true traditions outside of Thanksgiving or Christmas. Mm -hmm. What true traditions do they have? None. And even with the food, if you look at it, what Black people did was scraps to become soul food. Mm -hmm. That they that they had all the food like uh, for them. They couldn't come up with better shit than meatloaf and mashed potatoes. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> it's just, and it's not to giggle nobody, you know what I'm saying? But it's yeah. just facts. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, we have to look at when do we just become Americans? When do we stop saying we're stealing from each other mm -hmm. and say, you know what? As Americans, we, we, we're making this. And I see every generation that does dilute. Like my, my younger kids, they really like don't know what the hell we, we doing and they're doing something totally different. And like, yo, we don't <laughs> operate this way. Me and my friends operate this way. Like, mm -hmm. y'all crazy. <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying? So it's, and I got, my, my kids range from age 24 down to eight-year-old twins. Yeah. So I got the, I got the whole I got like two generations at the same time, yeah, and, and I see the difference in how everyone's operating. You know what I'm saying? And we got to just yeah. become just one America. I'm not sure if because tonight's election night, if that's going to happen tonight. You know what I'm saying? Because like anything, we do need a leader to say something. Mm -hmm. I still believe it's local. I think if you did, whatever state you're in, whatever city you're in, you need to vote locally more than worry about the national vote. So mm -hmm. the local vote affects you more. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So for issues like oh, that could be on a Taylor issue with a no knock warrant, that's a local thing. That's not a national that's thing. That's a local thing. You're absolutely you know what I'm right. Yeah. Like, we have to be aware of our local laws and, and be at the local capital, talking to our local Senate, saying this has to change. Because mm -hmm. at the federal level, they don't care. You know what I'm saying? The federal government actually has not that many laws for the state. The state's run as its own country. And that's what yeah. people need to understand. The word state is a fancy word for country. That's all it is. And it's 50 countries decide to say, you know what, let's become under one umbrella. Let's carry the same flag and chill. Mm -hmm. But we have to really look at home first, home base. And be like, you know what, who's my, my mayor? Yeah, I live in Atlanta. My mayor's not Keisha, unfortunately. Right. My mayor's rusty. <laughs> I live in Sandy Springs. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Do you know who your mayor is, where you live at? Right. Right. You know, I, had, I had to tell some lady today, like, you know, I, I was, you know, um, driving some off to, to vote. And they were like, yeah, you know, Keisha's my, you know, our mayor. I say, you live in Stone Mountain. She's not your mayor. Right. She was like, what? I say, you live in a different county. Right. I was like, she doesn't belong to you. <laughs> she belongs to Atlanta. And right. Atlanta's not the whole north part of Georgia either. Sorry, people. <laughs> like Atlanta is a, a very small city mm -hmm. and, the, and the burbs are huge. Mm -hmm. But to make it simple, we, everyone says they're from Atlanta. <laughs> right. You know what I'm saying? So I think if we get local, like I said before, whether it's with our neighbors to our local politicians and really forcing the issue, Real change could happen the way we want it to happen to our neighborhood, to our city, oh, to yeah. our county, and it can bleed into the state. Then from there, the model could be looked at like, oh man, like yeah. this is working. There's no difference how when Colorado decides, hey, you know what? Weed is legal. Everyone yeah. stepped back and said, you know what? Let's tell you how this is going to explode in their face. And some things happened. They had a high, like, you know, um, Poverty rate that happened automatically because people were just was kind of going in on weed and they were like, mm -hmm. you know, not paying the rent. So they got evicted and they went up in the street. So they wound up having a lot of homelessness, but then they wound up uh -huh. trying to fix that. And now other other states have made it legal. What's the connection of that? Again, it's like again, just getting something done that's passing something locally and making a change. Yeah. And if it means that's a racial tension issue or just an issue, period, we have to make it happen.
And the more we get to know our neighbors, because our neighbors are different from us, whether Atlanta is now having a big Indian population come through. Mm-hmm. In, the, in, the, in the beginning of 2000s, it was more a Korean population that was coming mm-hmm. through. Now, all the, you know, all the Koreans have a big foot, foot holding in, in Gwinnett. You know, so mm-hmm. also Hispanics in Gwinnett. Now, Absolutely. the Indians are coming in and they're taking part of North, North, uh, North Atlanta. They're taking care of Sandy Springs, Roswell, into Alpharetta. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So that happens every decade, though. A new culture is going to come in and take over, yeah. and it's not a bad thing. But again, how that's going to affect them? We have to look at as far as how it's going to affect our neighbors. Does the police department represent us? Is it diversified? Just right. like that's like your job is. You got a quota. Well, police department, where's your quota at? Yeah. I don't want to see a Muslim woman at all on there. Why not? Yeah. Absolutely. You know what I'm saying? Like I'm accountable. We have to. We have to get more local. Like the beyond the other things should not have happened. Like it should not have taken her being being killed, murdered, you know what I'm saying? For that, that particular law to be abolished. Th- that should have been looked over and saying what laws make no damn sense. Yeah. And not just saying, why was the status quo? Let's leave it on the, on the books. Yeah. Until some shit happens. We, and that's how the type of country we are, though. We're, we're a let that shit happen country. And then we're fucking a, we bring <laughs> then to it. We don't want to address it. We just, attention may come to it. And then we yeah. have to. Oh, yeah. Because if it doesn't hurt us, then, you know, we don't have to fix it. It's not broke to us. So yeah, no, you're right. It. And if it's not affecting you direct, directly. Right. And if you are black and you feel like, hey, I've never been discriminated against. Okay. You know, that's what Little Wayne says. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So. Or, I, or explain to me how. And I, if I don't, I don't understand how, then that didn't I don't know. I don't know how. I know you're talking about him, but it's um, hey, if, if that's his life, he got you know confronted with anything like that, he dodged a huge butt, fucking bullet. Good for him. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Um, but the rest of the world or the rest of America has has not dodged that bullet. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying. And this is where the conversation. That's why I have this podcast. To have a conversation like this, you know, so yeah. brilliant women like you, you know what I'm saying, that can really bring light to this. And time, like I said, the new cycle is not having this conversation right now. You know what I'm saying? This spotty with the Philadelphia thing right now, but now it's all about the election tonight. And it, as you know what, and it should be, because this is huge fucking election. Absolutely. But, but before this happened, the election, this election night, it got it was real quiet. Before Philly happened, it got real real quiet. You know what I'm saying? No one's talking about a mod at all. And that's locally. I haven't heard nothing locally about a mod in nowhere in Georgia. So I'm like, what's going on with that case? Yeah. You know? And we got to bring things up again. We had to go back down to where we need to go back down to and say, what's going on with this? Like, start talking more about it. Start pushing the issue. Reporting more. Yeah, yeah. We got to come up with, you no know, like, our own, our own news. Do it. You yeah. can't even trust BET because BET got sold to Viacom years ago. Oh, let's you know not even talk about BET. <laughs> so it's like, you know, it's almost like that's like a that's like a coach a cultural caricature right now. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Oh yeah. And I, I grew up watching BET when it was originally owned by a black man. Same. Same. And I used to love it. Have you seen that episode from Boondocks about BET that they couldn't air? I mean, it was perfect. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it was perfect. It, it's it's insane, and and the whole cultural appropriation thing. You know what? If it's being stolen, that means your shit is hot. Worry yeah. worry about when your shit is not being stolen. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And I get it. Like yeah. you know, yeah, we got white rappers or whatever. You know, we always had white rappers though, even in the beginning. You know what I'm saying? There was always white rappers around. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Uh, there weren't that many of them, but they always came through. Yeah. You know, what I'm now they're all over the place. But yeah. you know what? Black people gave hip hop to the world. Yeah, it's 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 the most dominant music type. It surpassed rock and roll now. Yeah. So that's which is insane, which is a beautiful thing. You know what it's I'm saying? Beautiful. 
that's what I was thinking. Like with music, it, it, it's hard. Like music, since it transcends time and it transcends culture, I mean, people just got to let it be. Music is going to do what it does and it's going to touch who it touches and people are going to fall in love with it who has the heart to. It's music, you know, like it, it's translucent and it's buoyant and it's going to just flow among people. So the whole, you know, like I understand the balance of cultural appropriation for sure, but when it comes to music, music is for everybody. You know, I just saw a video of this lady. It was this lady and this guy. I have no clue what this dance is called. And it was like in the backwoods country. And it looked like they were crip walking me. <laughs> and I'm sure. <laughs> I'm sure they didn't call it crip walking. <laughs> that's what it looked like to me. <laughs> Music is music, and everybody is going to partake. You know what I mean? Listen, I've seen this the biggest, probably whitest redneck I've seen in my life recently. Mm-hmm. And a pickup truck he had a big American flag in the back, and he was playing Killer Mike. And he was here, and he had <laughs> all the verses down. He was going crazy with it. And, he, yeah. you know, and I was like, I kind of was shopping. He he parked his big ass truck like down down the parking lot because it didn't fit nowhere. And he came out, big just cock diesel motherfucker, just white with yeah. red beard. Like he was just he was like truly a redneck. You know what I'm saying? So, but I was like, wow. Yeah. But even country music is being affected by hip hop now. Mm-hmm. Hip hop is seeping into country music. Absolutely. Right. Listen, if you listen to Florida uh, Georgia Line. They freaking be trying to rap on that on their shit. Like it's like, <laughs> you know, I think if, if we try to look at what we have similarities of more, I think music is one of probably the only things on this planet that could bring people together into one place. Oh yeah, and and just be like there's something about us humans that we get tuned in. And if we find that one person that can that can we can gravitate to that artist yeah. like what Michael Jackson used to do, you know, like yeah. Beyonce does, or now any of these new artists like Kids Love, is yeah. like wow, like the attention that they can garner, you know what I'm yeah. saying? If, if we can bring that locally, if we can bring some, and I think parents just have to become leaders whether you want to or not, you know, so you bring these three kids already. Then you have to show them what you gotta do outwardly. You know Absolutely. what I'm saying? And we we gotta challenge ourselves more to be more neighborly. We gotta look at being more locally. I hope we can still be connected, you know what I'm saying? And 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 whatever you're doing locally, let me know. I support you. I'll, I'll ride to where you're at. You know what I'm For saying? Sure. I can get you back a thousand percent. You know For what I'm sure. Saying? Same, same thing. You can always call on me. Um, I can speak for Gina on this point. You could call on him too. Like we'll be we'll be there, you know. We gotta start working together. Get yeah, because you know, we we continue to challenge ourselves and question things, and not just not just agree on everything, because you don't want to pursue yourself around people who agree with everything you say either. You don't right. want to be yes man. You want people right. to challenge you. You know what I'm saying? Right. You want people to to say, "No, I don't know about that. This is where I'm coming from." Just to give a different perspective. That's For what sure. we need because we got to figure out what direction we're going to go. Oh yeah. And I'm afraid that even with this new election, no matter who goes into office. We still have no one talking about what the hell we're going to do. And we're expecting whoever we elect to represent us. And our own people at the local level don't want to represent us. And we're expecting some person all the way at this level to? Yeah. It's not going to happen. It's just not. You know, and, and maybe I'm being naive. Maybe I'm just being jaded, but I don't see it. Yeah. I just don't. You know what I'm saying? And any platform that we have, we gotta try to stretch it out to the max. Oh yeah. You know what I'm saying? And yeah. we totally have managed. to start sharing more information and getting things out there more and more and more. You know Absolutely. what I'm saying? We have to. If we don't see it on TV, that's what we got YouTube for. It's totally Absolutely. free. Absolutely. It's, it's the it newest up. thing. That's what I'm I saying. I mean, TV is going away anyway. So. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like. There's so many. There's so many different ways of, of getting onto some some type of platform to make yeah. noise. Because the stupidest shit gets the most attention. And I and I know for a fact anything that's that's righteous, that's right to do, is not going to get attention. 
and you have mm-hmm. to fight for that attention. But yeah. we, we, we can't be lazy about it. We can't get winded right away. Mm-hmm. We gotta know that's a marathon. We're not running a race. Yeah. And we have to be good stewards from the last generation who got fucking dog sicked on them, who had water hoses sprayed on them, who mm-hmm. just went ahead and crossed the bridge and got the ass beat. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like we have to look at what happened then and appreciate what they did for us to get us to the next level, to get us to where we're at now. To while well, a lot of us are accomplished. We have more millionaires than ever. Uh, you know, as as colored people, that's fantastic. More entrepreneurs, yeah. we get more. We see more colored people in tech. That's fantastic, but it's still not enough mm-hmm. because we're starting this fucking conversation that we're still not equal. Yeah, we're starting this conversation that we're not American enough. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? And it's like, yeah. when are we going to just be Americans and stop putting these damn pronouns in front of everything? Because all we ever do is create more and more separation with everything. Yeah, and that's what America is about: separation. Because <laughs> we don't do shit together. <laughs> even even really? if it's, even if it's church, you go to a black church and yeah. then there's a white church. Yeah, unfortunate. Unfortunately, right? yeah. You just don't go to church, and no, no doubt there's some non-denominational churches that are, are more mingled and and, and, and engaged. It's fantastic. Mm-hmm. But that's not how church started, <laughs> and yeah. it's still to this point today. You know. That's what you see. Mm-hmm. Even the churches are, seg- are freaking segregated. Mm-hmm. You know, imagine that uh, two churches from from different cultures got together just to do a fucking picnic, just like yeah, the pastors they, they, did. Yeah, you know it's a big thing. Like, that's huge. You get to this yeah. listen, and then you get to share it with your pastor thought compared to this pastor thought. And you might hit on something. They might invite you one Sunday over and you kind of cross pollinate and they go over and, you know, it's like, imagine that. Yeah. The, the, the impact on the parishioners, you know, and on Absolutely. their community. Yeah. Yeah. If you can change your block, you know what I'm saying? To be innovative, to be, you know, to have curiosity, to care, to, to want to actually become a village to help raise the next generation, Uh man, we're going to be dangerous in a good way. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So then we can handle the situation or avoid or not have, even think of a Breonna Taylor situation again. Mm -hmm. Or or like a George Floyd. You know what I'm saying? Any of these situations. Like, but until we figure things out, and everything that happened was local. Uh Mm-hmm. Local thing, and even with George Floyd, he knew the cop because they worked together in that damn club. So there was some history there. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Don't know how deep it was, but there was some history there. They worked together. Uh-huh. So for him to still go that route and do that made no sense to me. Murdered him right there. Yeah. Breonna Taylor getting shot in her own home. Make no damn sense. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? This, this, it just gets me upset just thinking about that shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, she she was just home. They were just watching Netflix. That's what they were doing. Yeah. Sad. What about this other guy that uh I think it was a cop that she went to the wrong apartment? She lived oh, on yeah. the third floor and he, he was yeah. he was eating ice cream on his couch. Yeah. And he just died in a, what was that? Just being human. Yeah, just had a sweet tooth. Yeah. Watching some TV and some ice cream. Who the fuck would think someone would come in and right away just, I thought that was my apartment. You know that wasn't your fucking apartment. Right. I, I can smell it's not my apartment. If I want to smell Puerto Rican in the air, I know it's not my fucking apartment. <laughs> you know what right. I'm saying? <laughs> like, you know what your shit smell like. Right. <laughs> you know, it's like, come on. You can't give me that. You know what I'm saying? I, I don't know. It's just, it really fucks with me. It really does. Yeah. And I'm really passionate. That's why, that's why I said, that's when I started this platform, I speak to white people too. You know what I'm saying? But it's really for mm-hmm. black and brown people to get their voices out. You know, I want to show strength in colored people. I want to show entrepreneurs, whether they're artists or whatever. Um, you name it. Poets I've had on here already. Like, it's, I love it. You know yeah. what I'm saying? To show the, the wealth 
and the knowledge that we have. Because I don't see no other platform really doing it that way. You know what I'm saying? And we got to keep on doing it. And I don't want to get famous people on here. Yeah. Because to me, that's, that puts us too far removed from the real life situation. Mm-hmm. I get everyday people doing something or saying something like how you did. So people can feel more of a connection. Because you're more tangible. You're more right there. Yeah. You know, I'm I inspired by the Tony Robbins. That's cool. He's a millionaire. That's fantastic. Mm-hmm. But he's also very far because I'm not a millionaire. Mm. Right now, if, he, if a year ago he was where I was at and he became a, a hundred thousand a year, he's making six figures from making thirty thousand. Yeah, I can feel it. I can smell it. I can taste that. Yeah, I can say, "Damn, I'm not that far away." Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Absolutely, I love it. I, and, I love the the offering of. Just intelligent, intellectual talent and a showcase, mm-hmm. you know, for the voice of the world. That's important. It, it really is. And again, it's, it's at the most basic human normal level. It's not about trying yeah. to get celebrities on here like that. Because now if celebrity wants to come on, cool, they can come on. But that's not the goal. Yeah. The goal is to get the average person doing something wonderful that even the news doesn't cover that. Absolutely not. You know what I'm saying? Um, the, the news doesn't... We're, all you hear about what shooting happened at some place, somewhere, and that's it. That's all you hear about in the freaking news. Mm-hmm. And then here comes the weather. <laughs> that's it. <laughs> right. <laughs> that's it. They were shooting in Atlanta today. Matter of fact, Bob, where's the weather like? You know, that, that's, that's what it is. Right. And... and we can't stand for that no more. We got to get our stories out because we have stories. We have wonderful, colorful stories to tell and mm-hmm. to share. And we have brilliance. You know what I'm That's saying? So true. And we got to make sure those stories are out there for our kids to hear and see because we can't get them lost anymore. Because yeah. the respect you said that we're lacking right now between the new generation and older generation, those stories are not being passed down. Yeah. Those stories are not being kept. So true. And if so we don't true. let them know exactly what happened in the past, they're going to repeat the same shit in the future. Yeah. Absolutely. So if, if, if someone's watching this 10, 20 years from now, now they have a reference, say, holy shit. Do you believe they shot a, a, you know, a cop shot someone in their home? Yeah. And I hope in 20 years from now, that's so, so forming the unconceptual right. thing. Yeah. yeah. Like, <laughs> like, why would they do that? Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, I hope they can't conceive that notion. Yeah. You know, and, and that's and that's the goal. But it's gonna take a lot of work. It's gonna take all of us to do it together, mm-hmm. pull resources together, get behind someone or something to start a group, a chapter of some kind, and to mm-hmm. figure things out and say, hey, like to your point, what is that pillar? Yeah. And become a subject matter expert in it and say we're attacking this. Not to say everything else doesn't exist, but, but we're going after really, this. Yeah. That's how you gotta do it. You you perfect one thing at a time. Yo, I I'm down for whatever you let me know. And I'm Absolutely. I'm down with like four flat tires. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I got you. Same. <laughs> you know <what> I'm saying? <laughs> Yo, I, I wanna thank you so much, Kyosha. Absolutely. Out. Same no, thing. Sorry. Thank you for inviting me. It's good to see your face again. Yes. You know, great conversation. Uh, this was great. This is wonderful. I really appreciate it. No, I hope you come back on. Yeah. For, for anything, whoever else you want to invite to as well, you know what I'm saying? Come back on, bring whoever you want to bring with you. No matter what topic you want to talk about, this is your home now. This is your platform. It's oh. not mine. So, <laughs> it really is. I tell people sometimes, it's not my platform. This is yours. Yeah, you know what I'm saying I just so happen to host it, and hopefully in the future someone else will take it over. That's my goal, you know what I'm saying. But the yeah. platform is always for the guest, and sometimes I feel like I'm ready to guest in your home. So yeah. thank you, thank, thank you. you so much. Thank you so much. All right, I, I connect with you later. All right. Absolutely. You take care all now. Right. Yeah. <laughs>